Good afternoon, Draft Dodger fans, and welcome to episode six of the Draft Dodgers. Um, we are honored to have a special guest, Joshua Preston, uh, today. But before we actually go to him and get his takes on what he likes about fantasy football, who he is, I, I really wanted to throw it to Terry tonight. Um, Terry has the distinguished honor of having the lowest point total of the league and then following it up with the next week with the highest point total of the league. So uh, what'd you do? How are you doing? And, and how do you do this? The Mr. Uh, Consistency. Well, yeah, I didn't start any Detroit Lions this time. So when I had the lowest, there was two Lions in my starting lineup. But I am excited to get Amon Ross and Brown back. Uh, you had 11 touchdowns. Did you know that? That your team had scored 11 times. So think about the beers flowing, as you said before, with the loss. How many pitchers with the bad guys would you have gotten if uh, you would have got through the first half of the first half of the games, right? Going into halftime of those first half of games and you got seven touchdowns in your pocket. Well, I don't. Hopefully, I wouldn't have dropped a starting running back like last week. <laughs> oh. Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I mean, he didn't do very well, but hopefully, this week Connor's out again. Well, it's Thursday night game, so you will probably get another yeah. one with it. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've never voice. had. I, had, I have never had uh, the top score. So, uh, even going into last year, I, you know. There was a lot of games where I see in the past 10 years watching it, I'm like, how are these guys putting up 350? Especially you, Ron, a couple of years back. It was like 400, 390, over and over again, just rolling people. And I never had a team like that until last year, a little bit. And then I certainly have never finished the season with the top score. So I don't expect for it to hold, but it is nice to have at the moment. You're, you're in the money as of right now. We're chasing you. I'll that's, take it. That's good. The The voice you heard earlier was uh, that of Joshua Milton Preston. So, Joshua, welcome. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, this is my second year in the league. Last year, I was the little brother backpack off of Jacob, but he had to have some girlfriend issues and leave the league, unfortunately. But I'm here to take his place. I am by far the youngest in the league, from my knowledge. And yeah, I'm sitting pretty comfortable this year, four and two. Just had a tough loss and a very tough week, but yeah. So um, it's only your second year. I, I swear, I thought you were sharing with your brother earlier than that. No, last year was the first year that I've been in this league. So I got a little so, showcase of what it's about, and then he left me on my own. There you go, I'll throw you to the wolves. <laughs> Well, can you tell us a little bit more about Jake's girlfriend issues? Was it something where he didn't want to split time between <laughs> his girlfriend and and fantasy football? I think he, or... <laughs> yeah, I think it was the time commitment. I think he wanted to spend more time with his girlfriend. Knew he couldn't commit to the what is it five hours a week studying fantasy football in this league, the average week take is what I say week take. These guys priority I think, all the, the way. I think it's got to be more than five hours a week on average. If you if you try to figure out these guys, shit, we got more than well, that. What in would the you podcast say? Time. <laughs> the yeah. uh, did did you see the waiver wires this week, Terry? Where Dog uh, picks up Speline uh, from the the waiver wire and twenty seconds later drops him for Duggard. So he uses a waiver spot, gets Speline, and then a minute and a half later. He drops them at two in the morning or three in the morning for Duggard. Well, did he use a waiver on him, later. or did he just did he just have a free square that he flipped? The, the no, it was Wednesday night. Well, uh -huh. I, I don't know what the whole free square two a.m. in the morning is. That might be a whole different type of free square that I don't know much about. But the idea that he picks somebody up at two in the morning, which seemed like it by the time that the, it was just the auto waiver selections go because it was just one thing and then drop some, so, Doug, work in the, work uh, in the so 2 So it looked magic. like he picked, yeah, he picked up Duggar as a free agent and um, he, he picked up Robert Spillane as a free agent also. 
So that was at 221. He, you know, he's awake at 1230. He's got every right to be a little confused. It's, it's 17 Coors deep, and he's, you know, two tins in, and he's picking up people. I like that. Hey, one yeah, he might have just been, like, hit the wrong button, choked on a bit of chaw, coughed yeah. a little bit, had time to flip him for Duggar. <laughs> just, just wonder, if you, if you were to get a little bit of that dip in your mouth as you, like, inhale a little bit, would, would part of it come out your nose? I mean, that would be a burner. It would be bad. Super bad, Josh. In yeah, the college days, you you dip it all in the, your college days. No, I do not dip. No. Is this just like I've a dirt day in session, like in it. public air? You just get them on here and ask about Jacob's girlfriend. The hot seat. <laughs> the hot seat yeah. for Josh. <laughs> we're gonna switch the name to the fancy hot seat, then ask nothing about fancy. We're 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 looking for a stump the stat master from you tonight too. One of the things, Terry, that Josh had critiqued, you know, um, I'm going to ask him later on who is his favorite um, guest so far on Draft Dodgers, but his critique was he liked what we were doing in the first two weeks with going through some of the uh, the league, some of the matchups and everything, and he doesn't like a lot of truth talking or text talking or dog talking i about, never said that um, i never that's said that. what i heard i'm inferring that uh -huh. but that's what i'm hearing yeah. so um because he's our special guest star i wanted to kind of go over uh some current league standings it's a third of the year into it uh, terry you have any issues with that i don't i was just curious if like you're trying to spin josh as being like the the nemesis of all these people since so they don't come after you no, that's not it. What I'm, what I guess, what I'm trying to do is say, I'm listening to the audience. He's a, a he's a great audience. He's a great uh, listener. He texts me when's it, when's the podcast open? When's it up? When are we doing this? He, he really... likes to go to bed on Wednesday nights listening to the sweet, uh, baritone voice of uh, Terry. So that's that's what he wants. So, okay, well, yeah, let's, let's give him what he wants. So, uh, text uh, right now again is, and I say with a T, Tex Lasso, Tex Bundy, the unit trader, Tex Kaczynski, is in first place with 6 and 0. He's lapping the field with points. So, as you are with the most points for the week, he has the most points overall, almost by 200 points. I don't see how anyone's catching him, but I have a couple um, stats here later that I'd like to go over with that stuff. Intervention, who's my matchup this week, is at 4-2. and two. Then your Terry is at 4-2, and two, but you're only uh, you're like 30 points behind him, so you could be in second place. Then it's our guest, Joshua, UChicago at 4-2. and two. Puss at 4-2. and two. And then the outlier, a dog at 3-3 uh, three and three with the second least points for in the league. At 418, he still has, he's a 3-3 three and three record. Truth at 2-4, and four, Chaos at 2-4, and four, Shiz at 2-4, and four, Man Love at 2-4, and four, Yours Truly at 2-4, and four, and Knights at 1-5. and five. So um, a, as you look at that, any, any thoughts, guys, any surprises, any, anything that, that comes to mind with our standings right now? Uh, Josh, do you want to go? I mean, I was just looking at the, the teams per who's where, and I think Chaos's team is a lot better than where he's at. I think he'll flip around. He has by far the most points against 1740, which is not even close to Texas points forward. But I think his team is very solid, and I think he'll be the biggest bounce around in the second third of the season. Yeah, he's, no, the, he's, he's the one that has all the name changes as well. The luck, unlucky team <laughs> last year, right? He lets you know it if he's unlucky or if he's scored against mm -hmm. too much. Um, I, well, what I'm looking at is it's it's interesting the difference between the points against versus points for. You can't take anything away from Eric for far and away exceeding everybody else's points, but he does have the least amount scored against him as well. So he's just you know, eating ice cream and drinking, drinking tall boys and enjoying his Sundays, it looks like. Um, so, with, go ahead. Terry, you got any tall boys with you tonight? I mean, am I going to hear any champagne popping no, in the background? Just, 
Water. Just water. Oh, okay. Just wondering. Just water. A lot of the audience members um, really do request one or two being popped in the background because they it's the soothing sounds of a beer being opened in in the microphone that really helps them go to sleep or get well, through the Well, it makes for a, yeah, it makes for a um, more loose show. So the, the, the guests have something to do with that too. I mean, if Eric's on here with all of his bling and, and he's pulling tall boys out from underneath the table every every five minutes, it's kind of makes me want to join in. And Al was three sheets to the wind, I think, when, when we were had him on. He said he had been out all night, so, you know, got to join our guests and can't let him do it alone. Maybe maybe uh, in a couple of weeks from now when I'm on midnight shift, I'll crack a morning beer for you. That'd be nice. The 7.30 third shift beer, that's a good one. Yeah. You know, that it's interesting one. that that Terry or that Tex would would actually be drinking from his work location, on video talking about gummies and hitting the pen. That that was interesting to me. <laughs> well, he it drove really to was. work to drink to drive home. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> He's putting himself on blast there. I know. I'm like, uh-huh. wait a second. If one of our five listeners fit, find out that where he lives or where he works, <laughs> things are in trouble. Um, right. Well, well he just has to say lawyer, lawyer. See, that, sh- that should have came. There's a reason why we talked about that after. So now he knows how to approach the situation. Yeah, the, uh, the, the names this week were funny, but when uh, Al put in lawyer, 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 <laughs> Giggle. Uh, <laughs> so the other thing about your question, I think that truth. I mean, this is a receiver league, and his wide receiver core is is very strong. He's got a lot of points. I think he's going to shoot up the boards here a little bit. Uh, we'll. T- I want to touch on it later, but um, I took a little deep dive into defense again this week, and no surprise to anybody here, but Mark's uh, pretty solid defense is going to carry him I think to the playoffs just a early prediction here but looking at it Dog has a lot of injuries I don't know if there's any team that's banged up more than him so the fact that he's luckily slid himself in a sixth place with the least amount of points three wins is three wins every one of them matters so if he gets healthy he can make a push as well didn't he just get somebody back too this week uh, Keenan Allen's probably not going to go yeah right? that's right Allen I, don't, I think they'll probably wait for after the bye with him, if it was a, my guess, but he hasn't played yet. I wonder how long I'm going to have to keep on uh, holding Deshaun Watson. I really think. Did you drop Allen play. Robinson or start him last week? I didn't pay attention to that, but I know he finally had a couple if catches. If you watch the game and you see him score a touchdown, you'll know he's on my bench, and which happened again <laughs> this week. I'm glad I won because a rob you of your season – is the worst. But then I see Matt Stafford and that awful offense go downfield in that weak elbow of his. See Robinson one-on-one with the corner, and he just throws a simple fade. He jumps up. I'm like, if he, Matthew Stafford wasn't a racist, this would be an easy pitch and catch with him a lot of times. But he just likes throwing to Higby, Cup, Butterfinger Ben, all those white guys. Do you know what's funny? Um, I'm looking at Al's team, and he made a couple comments to me about how we don't. His team is so banged up, and we need more IR spots. But the reason why he said we need more IR spots is because he got six people out. But it doesn't count if your whole all of your IR spots are stashes. I mean, these aren't guys that he's drafted. He's got Karen Williams. I knew he was going to pick him up. Uh, Jamison Williams, Detroit wide receiver. These are not guys he's drafted. These are stashes. Mm-hmm. So when he's getting guys banged up and he's already got all of his IR spots filled with stashes, you can't really complain and say you don't have enough IR spots. I think three is just fine. Mm-hmm. I, I think three is just fine. Um, hey, would you do me a favor and look at uh, Josh's defense for me for a second and tell me if you see something? that I noticed something pretty um, unique about sure. Josh's defense this week, and uh, I didn't know if you if you see it as well. Um, Josh, do you know where I'm going with this? Uh, the no linebacker strategy. 
Zero LZ. Is that an actual strategy that you? We might as well go into this then. So go ahead, Josh. Is that yeah, a strategy that you that you want to employ, or is it by accident, or? Um, it's a mix of stuff. So obviously, I'm doing it. I didn't anticipate it, but as the draft went through, my draft was a little weird. So I had basketball in the direct center of the draft. So I had an hour window where I wasn't drafting. My friend was drafting, but I had the first five picks. And I thought if I could pick five solid offensive players that I know that can get me points, the defense won't matter that much because there was a couple reasons behind this. I knew everyone's going to focus on linebackers and then only two safeties. But if I can get the safeties or cornerbacks that are guarding one of the top wide receivers on the other team and in a very heavy passing NFL in the last couple of years and they get 10 targets a game, that cornerback or that safety will have many more opportunities to get at least a tackle. And I think the difference between the top players and like the first five or six picks, getting those star players and then worrying about the defense later was more important to me. So, so I, you, I mean, my defense isn't very good, though. <laughs> yeah, no, you have the worst defense, so don't let's not yeah. be you know dunking on people yet. But are you mm-hmm. you have an open spot? Are you considering this week? Not that it's a strategy, but it could happen where you do all defensive backs. Yeah, I think that's probably how it's going to go. I had a, a wild card defensive end, but they're slotted as linebackers sometimes to just to see if I get a little point boost out of them. It was Highsmith the first couple weeks, but yeah. Have you been finding yeah. yourself at all? Low Smith. Um, he's been bad. Low Smith, yeah. He's he's hit on. So he's one of those guys where you he's going to hit like in not as many points as he'll score more than Allen Robinson on his on his good weeks, but he's uh, probably still not going to score good. if you get it in. Uh, have you noticed yourself when you have these matchups, the defense turning against you? Has it has it seemed to to cancel out pretty well, or is is it something that um, you see working where you're kind of keeping pace with the the matches that you're playing? Um, I think I've gotten outscored defensively every week, which isn't a good look for me. I think I I lost um, Chin, which is very rough at the beginning. I lost Simmons as well, so that kind of hurt, but I don't know. I think I can get an average of around 10 usually per cornerback, and I think if I can sustain that, I think I'll do just fine for defense. I disagree. I'm trying to get 100 points out of my defense, 115 with a kicker. I mean, that's a, that's a high-end stretch goal, but I'm trying to get at least 15 from these guys, and I think that's what you need in this league to keep up. It'll mm-hmm. swing. I mean, you can't have... You can't have offensive players that go off for 40 and then lose every single defensive line across the line. You've got too many spots there. There's seven of them, seven offensive players. I think it's just too important. You've got to get your defense right. I, I mm-hmm. applaud you for the strategy, though, and um, I would like to say that it's just better on your team than mine. So mm-hmm. if you, you well, we'll if see how it goes. Uh, obviously, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'm the idiot, though. No, so it's not an idiot. I mean, yeah, you're yeah. four and two. There's half the league would right. love to be four and yeah, two. Yeah, if I was two and four, I'd be coming on here saying I don't know if this strategy would have worked. That's right. So yeah. one of the things that that you may want to think about, and there's strategy behind this, is not going the corner who is going against the best wide receiver, but finding the corner opposite of the best corner. So the rookie corner, they call it the rookie corner rule, or just a rookie mm-hmm. corner. Mm-hmm. that opposite of the stud corner and he's just going to get picked yeah. on all the time you pick up this turd i don't know who he is and you're starting him and he's got an interception a game for the last five or six games and a 40 yard touchdown well, that ship ain't going to sail all week or all year so you're you're playing with fire there i hope he does get another pick for you and a pick six and all that it's just not sustainable so you're going to have to mm-hmm. um sell it fatherly wisdom that's it but well you're talking out of both sides of your mouth kind of there Ron I mean I agree with you that you want to go for the rookie cornerback that's going to get heavily targeted instead of the lockdown corner that's on the best 
wide receiver. But the person you're talking about, I have highlighted on my page to talk about. You're talking about Tyreek Woolen. Dude's He's got, got four, an like interception four. In, in every game for the last five games and a pick six. Uh, four four games in a row, but he's also got two two uh, fumble recoveries in a row. He's got a touchdown, a block kick, and he's got a four two forty time, which is Sell high. third best, which is third best for the uh, for somebody six foot tall at the combine ever. So I I don't know maybe they're onto something. Um, get uh, he's a fifth get round. He's a fifth, sell you. fifth round. No pick by the Seattle Seahawks and he was out of the uh, University of Texas at San Antonio so I did a little research on him and he stood out to me as well so I didn't think anybody picked him up uh, I think that's a good one to have if you're going to employ that cornerback rule that's what I want but it, I just don't think it's sustainable production that's all I mean it's great to have You just I just don't see it being sustainable production that's all is the choosing the second wide receiver on every team sustainable? <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. I had to bring that one out. That is yeah, I don't think not that's good. Either. <laughs> hey, we're talking about defense. Can I just can I go over what I kind of dug yeah, into a little absolutely. bit? As long as we can ask Josh the bonus question. University of Texas San Antonio, their mascot is what? Texas San Antonio. Yeah, your boy that you picked up is from the University of Texas San Antonio. What is their mascot? The the Road Runners. Go Road ahead, Terry. Runners. You're up. So that's uh, pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last time I did this pretty early on, and I just was interested in knowing how this whole cornerback versus linebacker strategy was shaken out so I just wrote the 20 top defensive scorers down uh, last time and it was equal it was 10 and 10 if you recall I think we talked about that when Clayton was on maybe but this time I, I had at it again but the only difference is that there's some teams that have had a bye so last week the Lions, Raiders, Titans and Texans all had a bye um, I did 25 this time and there's not a huge difference between number tw uh, number one is Roquan Smith. He's got 122.3, and then number 25 has 89 points. So there's not a big delta there, but it is it makes a difference when you're going line by line. And I thought it was interesting to see. So we got Roquan, and we got Jordan Hicks. We got Ladarius Sneed. So there's one for Josh right there. Uh, Nick Bolton, Jordan Brooks. So that's the top five. Then we got Foyer, Zaheer Franklin, Devin Lloyd, C.J. Mosley, T.J. Edwards, Pete Warner, Darwin James, Drew Tranquil, Eddie Jackson, Devin White. So that's 15. Then you got another cornerback, Antoine Winfield, Rashawn Evans, uh, Hafanga, that's Dave's guy there, and we got Miles Jack and Bobby Okereke. Uh, and then the rounded out with Devon uh, Wilson, Cole Holcomb, uh, Walker, Mikel Walker, which I think he might be hurt now, Mika Fitzpatrick, he's hurt, and Greenlaw. So I looked at that, and I was just curious to see how it shook out, and this time it's 18 linebackers and 7 defensive backs. So it was 10 and 10 in the top 20, go down to 25, and it's 18 to 7. So I kind of thought that might happen. Um, I thought that as the season went on, you would have more linebackers and also big name linebackers shaking their way to the top. It's kind of what has gone on here. So um, I got five, Mark's got four, Clayton and Tex and Dave all have three in there, Chad and Jerron both have two, Josh and Al have one, and then Ron and George with a zero in the top 25. That's how I had it. A couple guys, uh, as far as keepers, I kind of wrote down everybody's keeper, if anybody's interested to see where those shook out. Roquan was number one, Foye six, Wagner 30, um, CJ Mosley was nine, 
Ho Holcomb 22, Buda Baker 60, Logan Wilson 68, Devin White 15. I didn't have that in order for you. Campbell is 44 run. And the three that don't really add in, which is Shaq, Chin, and TJ Watt, because those guys are hurt. But that's my little deep dive. If anybody's interested, I, I was interested, so I just thought I'd dig in and let you guys know how that shook out. Amazing. Great job. Really fantastic. Uh, I'm interested to see how that would be in three weeks and how many go from 18 to 20 or 18 to 14, right? See how that, that plays out. But you just get more opportunities, I think, as a linebacker, especially if you're a green dot linebacker who's got who's in there every play. They're just going to run the ball. I mean, what is a typical... I want to say the typical offense runs somewhere between 40 and 70 plays a game. And if you are a linebacker, you're, you're probably seeing between um, 20 to 35 um, rushing attempts. And so if you're a cornerback, like you were saying, Josh, you might get 10, you might get 7, you might get 5. And so just probabilities uh, you're just getting less probabilities as a as a defensive back is than you would and you're just playing if you can just keep turning them and guessing right and knowing the the coverage and stuff you might be able to get there but I can't believe the what you the keepers uh, stood out to me in that Terry what kind of turds we have for keepers right now I mean overall yeah, I, there's I one in the top just... 10 or two in the top 10 well, the, yeah, you got uh, Roquan is one, Foye is six, and CJ Mosley is nine. So you got three. No, three. But I think some of those maybe would have, I mean, Shaq probably would have been close in there. TJ Watt was on a pretty good tear. I don't know how it would have shaken out had those guys not been injured, but defense always seems to be like this. You are chasing guys you never heard of come mid-season and you plug them in and they'll get you 20 you know so if you, you have to stay on top of it and that's something that seems to never really be set is your defense uh two guys last week for me not that i've i have anything but two guys for me last week that i picked up as free agents got me 20 points both of them um as free agent uh defensive pickups Troy Anderson and Neil from uh, Seattle. So I had Troy Anderson tagged on mine and Neil tagged on mine. So I went back and um, who did I end up picking up? Oh, I picked up uh, I picked up a defensive back that I had just ranked above them um, on the Jaguars, and those guys were right there though. And I think Troy Anderson might be one that sticks. Seems a couple weeks ago, Ron, we were talking about the two defensive guys that I liked that you had picked up. Uh, the defensive back for Edwards and Tampa. Phillips. Yeah, those guys seem to have lost. Uh, Edward, uh, lost Phillips has been doing spot. fine. Edwards, Edwards shit the bed. Absolutely. There oh, we go. there it is. <laughs> Twenty-eight minute mark eight? in true. <laughs> is that a Twenty-eight minute fashion. Dude, and oh, natural natural daddy. People, daddy life. The people who aren't watching uh, live via Twitch, it is a Natty Light um, for those on Spotify. Uh, it's a college beer of choice there for you, Chicago. Um, looking at the matchups, do you guys have the matchups in your in your queue right now? Is there um, uh, there's one that I kind of wanted to talk about, but do you guys have any that you wanted to? Uh, I'll go through them real quick and see if there's any. It's uh, Plants and Intervention, Truth and Shiz, Tex and Chaos, Dog and You Chicago, Terry and Puss, and Money, Meat, Man, Love, and Nights. Uh, any one of those that you kind of wanted to talk about uh, specifically? Um, I'd, I'd like to, to look at the uh, Truth and Shiz uh, matchup only because um, I, I like, it's interesting what, what Chad is doing here and what Truth is doing here. Um, he's taking Stevenson from uh, New England, starting him, uh, 
I understand Damian Harris is hurt, but I mean he's taking that and saying I'm gonna, I'm gonna start him. DeAndre Hopkins, you don't know what you're getting with him. You're hoping that he comes back. He's not kind of labored and getting four or five touches and he's worked in gingerly. He's just going at it full steam ahead. All the while, he's benching some players that have some, you know, is he not going to play DeAndre Swift if he's available? Is he not going to play uh, Bateman if he's available? I don't understand uh, some of his, it's, it's a gamble there. And then with Truth, he's benching right now David Carr for Aaron Rodgers. And I like the bounce back, the thought behind the bounce back there, but um, some interesting um, maneuvers there with those two, that, those matchups there. I don't like starting Aaron Rodgers at all. I don't know why he was traded for. Uh, I guess because of what he's done in the past, but he hasn't thrown for. Has he thrown for? Oh, he threw for 250 yards once a couple weeks ago. Uh, but he's been hovering right around that 250 mark, and he lost Randall Cobb, who we all know is a Pro Bowler. So I don't know what he's going to do now. I would hope that they would lean on the run game a little bit more. Um, Derek Carr against Houston, I think Jones. I would go that route. Yeah, you know, I hope they utilize him. He seems to be the best option on the team. But I picked up Tanyan just in case. So hopefully he targets those two guys. I don't know. I I would love to put Carr in over there for, instead of Rodgers if I was truth. Chad's getting him on a good week with Jefferson being out on a bye. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is Tyler Higby... Um, I was really upset that I did not get Tyler Higby. It might be a sore spot for Truth going forward if he was going to rely on him, because he's—I uh, mean—he's got fire moves, so he's okay. But Higby, I think, might have to block a little bit more. They lost a tackle, I believe, this week, so we'll see if, if Higby's in there. We'll see if Higby's in there. Like they didn't have any—they didn't have any offensive linemen to lose, and they lost a tackle, so. He might be blocking if he's any good at that more than receiving those passes. Uh, Waddle, Waddle's going to get his, I think. And I don't. You said it's interesting starting Stevenson. I believe anybody would be happy with the combination of Ken Walker and and Ramondre Stevenson right now. So, but it's the freaking Patriots. You never know what they're going to do. I mean, they're next playing thing the you Bears. Know, you can yeah, run all they're over. They're playing them. the Bears. Come on. They're going to run all <laughs> over them. They could just go five wide. You never know. I'm just saying I, I don't trust um, Belichick at all. Um, so I mean, he looked like a beast last week. I, yeah, did I you see his numbers hurt. at all? Oh, my goodness. No, his utilization was amazing. Um, but I just don't trust Belichick. Belichick will say, I don't like this corner on the Bears, and I'll pick on him all day until you figure it out instead of just running the ball down his throat. He, he finds the sore spot and just attacks it, and that's what he does. And I don't know what that sore spot is, and neither do you, because it's all just a guess. But um, it, I just don't So against like Dallas, he had 20, 25 rush attempts, 161 yards, two catches. And against Cleveland, he had 19 rush attempts, 76 yards, two rushing touchdowns, and four, four uh, receptions. I think that any of us would be happy to put him in our lineup. Yeah. Well, amen. So, uh, Terry, for uh, just trying to get through Josh's uh, love fest for this uh, this segment, who are you taking between Shiz and, and uh, Truth? Well, I would like to know the truth of what a Shiz is, but hey, that's for another we, day. We will find that. Uh, here for that one. I think that is uh, eleven uh, nine. Um, Set your calendars. Um, set your calendars for eleven nine, and Shiz will be on. And that'll be the first question we ask him. Truly, what is the Shiz? The origin. And did he know what Eric thought it was? Because Eric's got he, an interesting take. I think he, he listens, and it's it's kind of crazy that he listens, but he hasn't come through and told me yet on anything else. So. I think Chad's got him. I think I think Chad's got him pretty easily. I did say that. I expect Truth to have a bounce back, but he's going to need Jefferson in his lineup to get a win over Chad at this point. Uh, Adams was not suspended. I don't know if the uh, Roger Goodell was listening in on Dog's take about how they should be, just be happy that 
Adams isn't pressing charges on Hunter Renfro. But he's got Adams in there. And Truth doesn't have Jefferson. I think that's a big deal. And he's got two beasts of running backs that we'd all be happy to have on our team right now. I think that I think Chad's got them. Bad luck Truth is uh, keeping that up. Josh, your take on that? I, I think Truth's going to win. I think the... Aaron Rodgers' play is just consistency over Derek Carr. Derek Carr's had some 100-yard games, some 300-yard games. I think he's just going for the consistent 200, 250 yards, two to one touchdowns. And I think, yeah, I think he has some good, or the Shiz has some good pickups with Stevenson and Walker. I just don't know if they can carry him a whole week. And I, I don't think DeAndre Hopkins will see the volume. Really no, don't. that's a that's a huge toss up, right? Mm-hmm. It's a huge toss up. Even with even with the injuries they got going on there, I mean, they just lost Brown. It could be. Yeah. I mean, Terry, it, it, I'm saying it 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 probably will be in three weeks for sure. But do you buy into Justin Fields and Darnell Mooney need to throw in camp to get chemistry or any of this BS that we hear all the time? If we do. Um, he hasn't been around. He just comes on and just, hey, I'm going to do a, a, a nine route or I'm going to do a stick and I'm going to be open, throw me the ball. I, I don't know. They played I, with each other, though. They yeah, like I mean, they... I, had, I had the Murray Hopkins. I mean, that's what me and Jake relied on all last year, and it was phenomenal. But I think with the Marquise Brown going down, I think the defense is just going to hover over Hopkins and make Murray run the ball. Which I don't is think Hopkins yeah. lost anything. I think maybe there was some performance-enhancing drugs that he got popped for, but it wasn't like, I'm losing a step, I need steroids. The dude was just trying to get better from an injury. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that he probably was healed up a long time ago. He just had to sit on the suspension. He's probably itching to get in there and prove himself. And I don't really... You don't really have to get it close to Hopkins. That dude's got some extension and some hands that I have not seen any other wide receivers pull off, so... I I'm had him. Sure, he's gonna do what he does. I had him one of the years that I won. I think I had Hopkins, Adams, and Kelsey one of those years. And some of the catches, he just caught everything. But it was oh, Watson. Yeah. He was just catching everything. Josh, do you remember um, that Hail Mary? That uh, the, the Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, of course. Like yeah. you guys. It was it was One. a plus fifty for us. It was insane because yeah. it, it put was... both of them over like a plus five mark. It's like a fifty yard bomb. It was just a point fiesta. It was Yahtzee. So look at the I smile just... on his face while you. Hear oh, it. I know. I remember <laughs> that because we were we were losing pretty bad that week, I believe, and then that happens and we just went off. So Terry, I think I finally got a little like, bit of that. Like it was like a seventy yard Hal Murray at the end of the at the end of the game that got the. the the bonus for both of them went over 300 yards for Murray, went over 100 yards for Hopkins, got him a touchdown, got both of them a touchdown. It was just like points just – and I can't remember. You might have been yeah. playing dog. I think it was somebody on the West Coast. They just a hard luck loser last year. Just got destroyed. I was like, mm-hmm. oh. That's, and it was the late game, so it's like 5.30. Yeah, it's a tough one. And it's a tough one. That is – that is. I had a little bit of that with uh, with Burrow and uh, Chase this week on that sixty yard touchdown yeah. at the end. That was nice. Finally hit that. Mm-hmm. You called that. Terry. They both last, went fifty too. Yeah. Yeah. Last week you called it. You said they're going back to Louisiana and they're going to kill it. I don't remember saying that. Did you see what Burrow walked into the the field with? Yeah. Did. I like that. That's awesome. Chase Ellis. That's a sick jersey. Yeah. So yeah. I talking about Deshaun Hopkins. Uh, did did you guys know that 3M actually sponsors his gloves? I know no. a lot of these guys get shoe endorsements, but 3M makes his gloves. So I, maybe it's not all in the in the catch for him, but it sticks. That's for sure. His hands are enormous. Uh, enormous. They're just they're large hands. He's got larger hands than most humans do, and and I know that's he. I'll, I'll put it on Slack. I'm going to show you how just how freaking they're just they're freaks. He's got freakishly large fingers and hands. So a couple questions here for Joshua. Um, Tex put something in the uh, text mentioned something last time he was on about 
picking his opponent. He was not going to pick his opponent in the playoffs. You're you're sitting at the four mark. Right now, four plays five. If you had your choice, right, hypothetical land, are you going to look at the analytics and try to pick an opponent that you think is weak, like the wounded gazelle that's limping and you're the tiger and you're just going to pounce and rip his heart out? Or are you just going to let it come to you in natural? Um, I think I'll do a little bit of both. I think at the four, you have a less like wiggle room to choose who you want. So you're most likely going to get handed somebody. But if I was one or two, I'd definitely look at it. I don't know. Texas overthinking it. Because if you have somebody that just went down with a bunch of injuries at like the eight or seven and barely slipped into the playoffs, you'd probably take them over anyone else. Absolutely. He's Terry, you're sitting at two. Oh, absolutely. Texas, Hello. Texas just dramatizing yeah, it. He's, he's gonna, just, he's gonna make a selection. It's he's mm-hmm. all, he's all show. He's, he's gonna make a selection. He's gonna do what's easiest for him. Last year, he did nothing but call me out the entire season. And he didn't take me in the playoffs when he had a chance. And he should have, right? And that what he, he regrets because the week one, he was the only one who could have beat you. I think. That's I don't what his think. Thing. I don't think so. I'd have to go back and look. I think I had. I think I outscored everybody every week in the playoffs. Jerome came the closest. I would love to see if somebody gets one over Tex. If he has a downfall to number two, just number one pick number two, first week of playoffs. Just take him out. I would probably want to put yeah, Tex in the opposite would... bracket of me if I could, because he's got a very good team. So I don't know if that's possible. He, he does have a good team, but this is. I, I did a deep dive on Tex. Um, I'll I'll see if I can share my screen with you guys. Um, I'm not sure that the the audience at home can can see it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to share my screen here with uh, everybody. Um, can you see that right there? Yeah. Yes. Um, so I did um, this. Thirty-two percent of his uh, points this year on a week-to-week basis is just from Cup and Allen. So if you look at Allen and you look at Cup and you look at those numbers, 32% week-to-week come from two players. It's an exorbitant amount of, of players or of points coming from two players. So he doesn't have either one of them this week. He's got this Wooby, which I appreciate, you know, people have to have a, a good one and two, but he's got this, and Josh Allen is lapping the field um, when it comes to points for quarterbacks. Cooper Cup is doing the same types of things that he did last year, but with this buy for Cooper Cup, I'm wondering if the Rams are going to try blocking and, and, and running or if they're going to spread out the offense a little bit going into the second half. And if Josh Allen can keep this production up, but 30% from two players really has boom bust have written all over it. And I think there could be a need for a little bit more uh, diversity on Texas team. Uh, I looked at intervention and intervention's got two really good players as well. He's number um, two right now. And he's got, I think it's at, 29 percent in his top two so it's close but i just think too much in the, in those top two for for uh for tax he's putting too much into allen and, and cup this week he, he has neither one of those two so we'll see how he gets uh through by mcgadden i don't really think he's worried about one loss that's for sure i wouldn't be if one of those players go down, I think it'd be bad for football because we all love watching them. But I don't think that – I wouldn't be worried about if I was Eric. I'd be worried about injury, and that's the only thing I'd be worried about because I don't think either of them are slowing down. The Rams can't come out of their bye and say, you know what we should do is use Cooper Cup less. That just doesn't work. That's the only thing working for them. And maybe they want to try to do other things better. Maybe they want to run the ball a little bit, but there doesn't mean that they're not going to use utilize Cooper Cup because it worked for him last year, got him the Super Bowl, and that's the only thing working with them now. They were a yeah, little get the bit ball more in star players' hands, and he makes he makes plays. I get it, Josh. I get it, Terry. But throwing the ball to him, like 
three yards, turn around, button hook, throw it to him every play. It's, it's just it's unsustainable. Maybe they um, throw to him deep. They were throwing to him deep last year. I haven't seen enough of them to know, like, maybe he doesn't have the time to do that. They need to figure out their offensive line. I don't know what how they do that. I don't know if they change their offense up. McVay's a lot smarter than any of us, so we'll see what they come mm-hmm. out of the bye with. But I don't. I would not expect... Cooper Cup and Josh Allen to slow down anytime soon. No, but Josh Allen may get slowed down by, um, aka a shithole up in uh, Buffalo with the bad weather mm-hmm. come the playoffs. So you never know. He he's on fire. He's doing really well. He's amazing. He's got a lot of weapons around him. Even the third string, third string wide receiver seems to be doing well. So. Who, who knows? Do you remember last year when they had that really shitty game against the Patriots and that nobody ran the ball and Belichick yeah. was just smiling because that's he's just happy to win that way and everybody was concerned that come playoff time Josh Allen was going to have to play them again it was going to be a similar situation and it was really bad weather and all he it didn't he lit him up it didn't matter he put up his points yeah Buffalo no, is going to have bad weather games that's for sure but. I think that he's the quarterback that any of us would rather have on their team than who we have now. So. Amen. He, he's, he's probably 100 points ahead of Mahomes right now at number two as well. So it's just it's ridiculous. Josh, who is your favorite uh, guest so far um, that we've had? I don't know if I've had a favorite. I mean, Texas week was pretty good. That was very entertaining. And then, yeah. who'd you, you, who have you had down so far? What's been the order? Truth, Truth was the first one. Um, I think he was the most um, cerebral. I think he did a lot of um, very smart takes. But um, Eric came in well prepared and um, super stoked and tall boys and gummies and pens amazing Story time. <laughs> amazing and Al again was was fantastic so those were the three so far and you're number four like I the like the Al too Al with the Statmaster was pretty good Stump the Statmaster he came you out didn't get to see there. your dad's face when he started talking about Hyman's though so that was pretty classic as far as having <laughs> the video feed on that was good uh, <laughs> Terry's favorite spot Terry, do you know what our, your favorite part of the show is? Oh, the call-in call question. In? The call-in. Right. We got a call-in question. Mm-hmm. All right, Josh. Look at look at his Let's face for it. this one. You ready? Hi, Josh. This is Kate uh. calling in from Springfield, <laughs> and I have a question for you. How long would you keep a player on your roster if, let's say, they have a thumb or head injury? Thanks. Uh, wow, that's a funny one. That's did good. You, that's do you want hilarious. me to hear you play it again if you didn't hear it all? Or do you no, got... I heard it. I heard it. A thumb or a head injury. Wow, that's that's a coincidence, really. <laughs> Katie from Springfield um, wondering. Katie from Springfield. Never heard the name before. Um, That's an interesting question, Katie. A thumb or head injury? I think we'll keep them out maybe three to four weeks. It really depends on their volume beforehand, the injury, I'd say. If they were putting up numbers, obviously you want to keep them on their bench. But if they're a flex, low-tier option, I wouldn't consider it anymore. Does that have any relevance to your basketball career? Or is, is... I can't connect anything right now, no. Okay. Just going to leave all of us out here wondering what the significance do you, is. Do you guys, either one of you, to um, cut players because of their injury status? Do you say, hey, this guy's... I'm cutting him because uh, he's fringe and he's hurt, or or not. That I'll, I'll just go with whoever this Katie from Springfield's uh, question is. I over the years I've had so many teams that I tell myself, you know what? It's not. It's not one player is more susceptible to injuries than the other. It, these guys are healthy now. They're all coming in in the best shape of their life. That's what all the beat writers tell you in the offseason. And what happens is they get hurt. So I really try to avoid them. I know I had Julio on my team for a while this year. Uh, he's gone. But 
I try to get people that I like, players I believe in, and players that have a good, healthy history. And I know that the injury bug can bite them all at any given time, but I'm not going after anybody that's historically made a glass, that's for sure. Josh, you? Oh, Josh, you got... I mean, yeah, I can't agree anymore. Just those core... You want those core at least two people on your team that you know are going to stay healthy throughout the year, that are on solid teams, that are high-octane offenses, that are going to produce points. And as for dropping them, I say you wouldn't want to drop them. At least for me, I like to keep them on my bench because even if it's... If, especially if they get hurt early, you never know what could happen come the last three weeks of the year. Yeah, no. The, you just make the playoffs. That's the whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. Terry, where, where do you think the cutoff line is going to be this year? Do um, you think it uh, for total wins? You need, you need seven. You got – there's five teams with four wins right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of games left. Uh, you're going to need seven wins to get in. But you always got those guys at the bottom, you know, from 7 all the way to 12, there's 1 and 2 win teams. So you always got those guys. Sometimes the top beats up on the bottom, and you get somebody sneaking in there with a 6. I think it's you better have some points if you're coming in uh, to the last week of the season with 6 wins. Well, sometimes those have been the scariest ones. You know, the ones that are grinding, like... Tex right now is smoking cigars and, and sipping on champagne and eating ice cream. You know, he's not grinding like the, the bottom dwellers, like me and Knights, right? We're grinding every day, trying to find, flip those rocks like we do in sales. So you never know, Josh, if, uh, six or seven, you think that's going to be our Mendoza line? Yeah, I'd say seven. Seven's probably, I don't think you get in with six. There's no way. There's... There's seven of us, though, with less than three wins right now. So, I mean, we're really fighting for below mediocrity. Um, sometimes you can take a loss right now as long as you're getting over 275 points because mm -hmm. uh, so, it's really a game of points. If there was, like, three games left in the regular season and you had two wins, do you think that that team should keep trying and maybe – flip a first or second round pick to the top team? No comment. Okay. Hey, Josh. I don't think, that's, uh, I I don't think that that is you. true. That That's taken out of context. I, I don't like that shade you're throwing right there. I think it's out of context. I thought it, flow, it flowed pretty well into the discussion. Yeah, I think it's out of context. <laughs> Josh, what was it like growing up in your house as a Bears fan? Um, a lot of I don't even want to say that. It was it was interesting. Well, the Packers obviously beat up on the Bears throughout my lifetime. But the few occasions, I think, is probably, what, two or three games the Bears have beaten the Packers? It's one of the best experiences in my household, I'd have to say. Just because dad's down, brother's down, and that brings down the rest of the family. And I'm just there cheering on the Bears. But... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I do get some support from the cousins, which is nice. Cousins are all Bears fans, so the family outings are nice when you get a guy, at least for football purposes. I always liked it. I don't know. What, what was the reason? Is it just because you just didn't want to be? What drove you to be a Bears fan? I'm not really sure. That's a great. I mean, obviously, I chose it from a younger age, and I've just always been a Bears fan. But I don't really know what the initial reason was, other than I guess I didn't want to be a Packers fan. I wanted to stand out. I guess. Be proud of my Chicago origins. Ron, did you try pretty hard to change that over the years? Yes. I think <laughs> every single year he said, you know, you're still accepted on the Packers bandwagon. I, I have. I've said. Um, so, Terry, can I ask you a question? If, if the Bears are number one, who's number 32 in your uh, rankings in NFL teams? Gosh, is the politically correct answer Washington? Because I, I don't know if that's my answer. Uh, Who's the, number 30. Who do you hate the most? So if it's the Bears are one, where do the Packers land? I guess that's, I, I'm assuming. No, I know, where you're, I know where you're going. I was just trying to t 
tie it up to the Schneider talk that's been on Slack constantly. I yeah, it's it's Green Bay. I mean, if I'm gonna if the Bears lose, they win. It's no matter what, it's always rewarding to watch the Packers lose to the Jets every time. <laughs> and and Josh, where do the Packers rank for you? Yeah, uh, they're number two. They're number two. Wally really? World, Roy. Wally World. How would you like to go to Florida and see if Florida was closed? That's right, number two. So I'll take that. That's a win, Terry. That's a win. Is that just because you like to see your father happy, or do you do you really enjoy watching them win football games? Um, a little bit of both, obvious. Yeah, I definitely rooting for Bears over the Packers every time, though. But if the Packers are playing the Jets, I'll obviously I want the Packers to win, but. It is nice to see them lose a game that they're definitely supposed to win. So that's interesting Everyone because can. if you're a Bears fan in the same division, you would think that the losses would be beneficial to the team you're supporting. It, it's, yeah, at that point, when the Bears are losing, the game last week is just tragic. Soon, soon enough, you realize the Bears aren't going to be a, a division contender, and you just give up on it. About halfway through the year, they kind of like lean you on throughout the year. Okay, maybe we can be good. And then they'll miss a goal line touchdown, overthrow a pass, and then by week six they're two and four or whatever they are. Progress. I don't know what does that do with the hyphen name still doing in football games. He he threw a block in the back that took that took away the fifty some yard touchdown run against the Vikings, and then going down for a two minute drill, get a chance to tie the game up again against against the Vikings and. Instead of going out of bounds, he tries a stiff arm move and basically just gives a handoff to the cornerback. Then this week, he lost the game for him again, in my opinion, coming down the line. Took his helmet off. He's hanging his head in the field. I wonder if he should just be putting applications in. I don't know why he's on the team still. Are you, are you blaming this on the hyphen, t- uh, Terry? I want to just clear point of clarification. I just he stands out, and I was pretty clear that it was the same player because there's nobody other, not many names that look like that. And, He's sulking with his helmet off at midfield. It was just not a good look. All right, so I'm gonna, uh, I'll take uh, draft dodgers away from this because you've you've come to a point where I'm going to pivot away from football for a second and, and ask you guys a question. Um, Terry, are you marrying Jordan if she's like, I'm going to hyphen uh, Terry, Joby, hyphen, whatever her maiden name was? And Josh, what? would you would you consider somebody hypothetically? Let's say her name is Katie, and she wants to be Preston hyphen Montgomery. Would that be a deal breaker for either one of you, Terry? You're first because I asked you. Um, I would hope that you would find that out early in the dating. Yeah, no, but and would it be a deal breaker for you? Well, because it wouldn't be a deal breaker if you asked her to marry you and you bought a ring and you got all the everybody is. Pictures are up on social media. The next thing you know, she's like, you know, I'd like to keep my last name too. No, but, uh, I'm saying you're right at the the ring purchasing stage, and you're out to dinner, and you know you're close. And she's like, yeah, I really like my professional name. People won't say know the who closer I am. that you are to proposing, the more likely you're going to stick it out. The closer that you are to first dating, the you know you might want to. You might want to have a couple dates, maybe get an overnight or two in there, but you might break it off. But you, are you for or against the, the hyphen? I just want to know where you stand with that. I'm not a fan of it. I, I, I mean, I'm a man that like to take my last name. I like my children to have my last name until they marry and take on another name since I have daughters. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Joshua? I'm not totally against it. I don't judge somebody because of it, but I, I, I find well, you're, it odd, you're, odd you're judging mind. this poor receiver from the Chicago Bears for it, so I'm just wondering if that's that's where I was going with it. <laughs> Josh, um, you, you have this fictitious girlfriend named Katie. Mm-hmm. If she said, I'm mm-hmm. hellbound on, uh, on keeping my last name and hyphen, so Josh Jr. is going to be Josh Preston Montgomery how you feel about that, which doesn't have a bad uh, sound to it, but I mostly agree with Harry. The fact that like you'll know beforehand, and if it is closer, you'll probably break it off. But 
if the reason was because uh, if the reason was because she's like I don't like your last name, then I don't I don't see that going through. But if it was like professional reasons or she's just like a lot of people know me for the last name, then I'd understand. But if it's like yeah, I hate the word Preston, the Preston just annoys me. I'd be like yeah, well, no. For for the most part, Preston Joby, it's a pretty solid you know down the middle fairway type name. Like, it's not like Booger Eater, right? I mean, that's the whole thing. It, it's not something so um, crazy. But I just I, I just pivoted. Well, what would you do? What do you think? What are your opinions? <laughs> mom, wanted to, mom wanted to change her name, and I was like, or keep her name. And I'm like, you've got to be freaking kidding me, Strangy. <laughs> like, you want to keep Strangy? Strangy Preston? She's like, well, I'm like, no, I, no, I was really adamant. I was like, no, you no, set the, no, set the ground no. down. How, no, how, no, when did no, this no, come no, along no. in the relationship? Yeah. What was the timeline for that? Oh, it was right at the end. It was like, uh, uh, wow. right at the How end. did that not come up? You, you didn't yeah, ever that talk didn't come about up that? at all. It, it's one of these, it was already known. We, you take my name. Hello. It, for me, because I'm shallow jerk, I'm like, you are getting an upgrade. You are like one E away from strange you're going from strangy to Preston that's a win there's a, I've met girls before that that were looking forward to the day that they married to get rid of a last name that was a bad last name Skaronic <laughs> yeah I bet he I bet he would take a different name he, he would take his <laughs> wife's name that's right <laughs> I think now just to clarify it though if it's a social if it's a social media thing or or employment thing of course mm -hmm. I, I don't care about that yeah. but I do find it kind of uh, it sounds awful to say but is it demasculating to just have take your wife's last name a little bit I know it's bit, equal yeah. rights era and all that and I fully support it all but I don't know I, I think I'd, I'd I'd be an it'd be a long conversation that I'd be trying to trying to push towards my last name that's for sure all right so terry the, i mean we're going to wrap this up here but i think i'm going to ask you a question you want to you want to kind of like the guy who's going to marry emma right oh i would hope and so you, yeah Not kind and of. you're going to want to respect him right <laughs> i know where he's dad going. um you know ethan or whatever the new name of the week is in in <laughs> is going to be Joby because he now is going to take my last name and he's going to come over for dinner and you're like, are you serious, dude? You're, 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 you are changing your last name because you want to be some... You're, you're not going to respect him. It's just would you not name. expect that handshake to be pretty limp? Oh, you would be dead fish handshake <laughs> all day long. All day long, it'd be a dead fish. Just He's probably not watching football games with you definitely not watching football he's definitely not going to the draft with 103 degrees out there he's probably having his mom go for Drink, or drinking natty natty lights drinking natty on lights. a wednesday on a wednesday at 10 o'clock all right that's all i got you guys got anything more terry you got any any uh nuggets you want um to i just i i wasn't quite done with the uh i just have one more question because i don't know I, I'm, I know that Draft Otters Nation is reaching far and wide these days, so probably not everybody knows the story of uh, your, your children's middle names. And I was Good interested one. to know, uh, Josh, what if you ended up with Green as your middle name? Would that have swayed you to be a Bears fan? And Ooh, and good anyway. question. You know, I've thought about this, and I think I'd have to be a Packers fan at that point. Shit! I and missed I mean, out. If you're... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it would have been inevitable that Jake would have been a Bears fan, though. Because he, I think all that stuff kind of combines into the Bears idea. Oh, my entire family's named after the Green Bay Packers except for me and Bella, but she's the youngest, so it doesn't count. But, yeah, my two siblings in between are named after the Packers. My dad obviously doesn't want me to be a Packers fan. There you go. Yeah. What, it was your fault, Rob. Yeah. Thanks, Andrea. I've heard this before. No. I know it is my fault, but again, um, I wouldn't change Josh's middle name a hundred out of a hundred times, even if you were uh, you tattooing yourself with the Packer logo everywhere. Uh, I'm glad that you're Milton. I wouldn't change it for anything ever. Uncle Milty. Thank you. Yeah. Do you so, want to fill the audience in on what uh, 
your whole thought process was with the middle names? Just sure. To wrap it up. Absolutely. Is... I, um, as you know, I love my wife more than anything in the world. She's the greatest in the whole entire world. But to say that we started um, as young as seventeen, and we had some some thoughts and some questions and some. You know, we work through some things is, is obvious, like the hyphen, right? You don't want the hyphen. Um, hey, you want names. And I, I'll tell you this, the Draft Dodgers Nation, I wanted Elvis Preston, Lisa Marie Preston, and, and uh, Priscilla Preston. That's what I wanted. And I went to her with this, and she uh, vetoed that. And I really find that disturbing. I think if Jake would have been Elvis, it would have been great. I love that. Elvis would it, Preston. Would he still have been Elvis Green? Uh, I don't know. That would have been like you're you're really trying at that point to force your will on on her at that point. I would have gave her the middle name at that point. It might have been Elvis yeah. Ron, right? Because of the affinity for Rons in this family. But Tory Tory Bay is a pretty name, though. It's and, a beautiful. John, name. Yeah. So I, it could have been it could have been a lot worse. It sounds a lot. Uglier in concept when you say I'm gonna name my kids Green Bay Packers, that yeah, sounds so awful. She said, "How about middle names, Knucklehead?" And I said, "All right, if I was middle names, it would be Jacob Green and Tory Bay." And she capitulated to that. But to make sure that we rounded out the trifecta of stupid, we named our dog Packer. So I will tell you this other story about Joshua. We said we would always have a dog and we'd always name it Packer. However, when it came to us getting a dog five years ago, everybody in the family was fine with calling it Devante. Um, we were gonna name the chocolate Labradoodle Devante. Um, make of that what you will, but we were gonna call it Devante. And Josh is like, no. He put his foot down, he was adamant, he said, nope, it will be Packer, the dog will be Packer. We always said it was going to be Packer. I'm glad it is Packer, but he, the Bear fan, said, nope, it's going to be Packer. So the trifecta of stupid is, is complete. Jacob Green. It would have looked even dumber if you would have named the dog Devante, and now he's on the Raiders. We would have changed it to, which he did. We legally changed it after he got traded to the Raiders to Devondre. Devondre. 